Hey coders, how's it going? It's Chris here, and today we're going to talk about updating data and deleting data from Parse. It's going to be a quick one because it's actually pretty easy to do. So I'm going to open up our project here. Remember to open up the XC workspace file. And while that's going, let's go to parse.com and go to our apps dashboard. Parse demo was the one we we're working on. And just to remind you guys, we have two rows of data in our contact store. And we're gonna try updating the email field of these two rows of data. So let's say I wanna grab this row of data for Tommy right here, and I wanna update his email. Let's go back to our parse demo. In the previous lesson, we looked at how to retrieve data. We showed two examples. One was retrieving a content with a specific ID, like right there. And the second example was retrieving all of the contacts in the contact store. Well, I'm going to go back to using this example where we want to retrieve a contact with a specific ID. And let's paste in Tommy's, which happens to be the one that we need. And let's comment out this bottom example, which is retrieving all of the rows of data in the contact store. Okay, so here inside the block of code that executes after it's retrieved, we are checking if the object is not nil, and we're checking if there is no error. Uh, and if so, we print out the first name. So let's do something else. Let's update the email for this object. So let's say object, remember we have to unwrap it because it's an optional type when it comes back because it may be nil. So that's what we're doing here. We're checking that it's not nil. So inside this if statement, we know that it's not nil. So let's say that the email is equal to Tommy at Tommy.com. And literally that's how easy it is to update a field of a row of data you simply just assign it the new piece of data. But don't forget that you also have to save it back. So let's type object.save in background. So I'm just going to use the save in background method and it's gonna save it asynchronously. So I'm going to run this right now and it's gonna execute that code. If all goes well, we should see this row of data under Tommy have an updated email. So it's running now and let's check our console window. Okay, so our console window printed out the first name, which implies that it went into this section of code and it should have updated the email and then saved it back up to parse. So let's refresh the page here. And sure enough, we can see that for Tommy's row of data, we've updated the email. Now deleting this row of data is very simple as well. If we wanted to delete it, we would simply, let's say, delete the object. We would simply say object dot delete. Now this one happens synchronously, meaning that it's going to pause the execution until it successfully deletes it. We probably want to use this one instead, delete in background. So it's going to spawn a background thread to perform this operation. And if you wanted to execute some code after it's successfully deleted, you can even do delete in background with block and then you can provide a block of code to execute. Once that request to delete it comes back. Uh, but we're just going to do delete in background and I don't actually want to delete my row of data so I'm going to comment that out. But at least now you guys know how to delete that. So there you have it. That's how easy it is to update data, save it back to the cloud, and how easy it is to delete data as well. Next week we're going to look at some more complicated PF queries where you can specify more constraints uh, so you can query your parse backend. So thanks for watching and don't forget to like and subscribe, share the video. I'll see you guys next week. I hope you guys all have a great weekend. Talk to you guys later. Bye.